Let's talk about parasocial relationships. In the age of social media, almost everyone has a sort of parasocial relationship. Considering you're watching this video on YouTube, you can probably name at least one internet personality that you know in an intimate way. The problem is we don't really know these people personally. It is an illusionary experience created by our brains to satiate this desire to interact and build relationships with people we can trust and depend on. They could even be a form of instant gratification because we can technically establish a deep relationship with one click of our finger, providing us the satisfaction of relationship without putting in the effort to do so. With a quick Google search, you can find tons of articles attacking parasocial relationships for those same reasons, portraying them as an exploitation of the modern problem of loneliness and human desire for intimacy. But is this negative connotation really deserved? Well, before we start, I think it's best to define exactly what parasocial relationships are so that we share the same idea throughout this video. I feel like many people think of parasocial relationships as a one-sided fanatical relationship and they fall into a hole of obsession with that person. This can happen, but the real term is much more broad and nuanced. Common definition declares that they are a type of relationship where a media user engages in a one-sided relationship, knowing lots of personal information and feeling some attachment with a media performer who does not know them at all. In fact, using recent research papers, most licensed psychologists agree on the fact that parasocial relationships are, for most people, perfectly healthy. Since media has only been around for a century at most, we have an instinctive response to our screens as if they were real-life situations. That is why although we know it is an obvious illusion, we can still feel immersed in the show and attached to its characters. This can explain the void we feel after finishing a very good piece because it is such as breaking the relationship between us and the characters in the story forever. The real, less researched issue of parasocial relationships comes into play when we mix social media and real relatable people. It has never been easier to maintain a relationship with your favorite creator online using Twitter, YouTube or Twitch which lets you interact with the streamer or the creator in real time. The intimate personal feel that the internet brings is something unprecedented. The line is blurred between intimacy and distance. Creators talk often about their own personal lives because of audience interest, and this deepens the relationship, creating a dedicated fan base as well. The most popular creators have such an immense fan base because they interact with their fans on a personal level. They don't see them as a means to an end, rather, they are the means. In fact, most, if not all, creators thrive off parasocial relationships. They are inevitable if you want the system of online personal entertainment to work. Feeling a connection to an online creator brings us closer to wanting to contribute to their well-being. For example, we buy merch, we donate, or we subscribe to a membership. We support them as we would support our own friends. They made our days better as friends would, so why wouldn't we? Most creators recognize this and are immensely grateful to their fans since they obviously couldn't create without the needed support. This can unfortunately result in them getting dangerously too close to fans. A famous example is Dream and his tweets inducing that kind of parasociality. Now reading these tweets, we can see off the bat that he is a genuine and appreciative person, showing love to the audience that have helped him get to where he is today. The downside of this is that some more intense fans who cannot draw the line obviously get too infatuated with these people and dedicate their time to toxic behavior such as attacking anybody who sheds a negative light on their favorite creator, sending death threats, and berating people who don't deserve that treatment at all. Dream knows of these more extreme fans, and I feel that by his exceptionally fast growth, can even encourage this type of behavior unknowingly because of the immense gratefulness he shows towards them. Unfortunately, this shows us that parasocial relationships can form on the other side as well. The creators are very much dependent on the audience too, and as such feel attachment to them but they cannot see the audience as something else than one whole unit. They cannot see the individuals forming the audience because it's simply impossible to do so. By putting them all in one basket, they can differentiate between the extremely bad outliers in the group and the moderate, reasonable majority in cases where they feel the need to defend them. And so, the bad fans see this as encouragement for their behavior. Toxic communities who idealize their favorite media performer and project their own perfections on them can not only be dangerous for people who try to criticize, but they can also be dangerous for the performer themselves. By projecting their perfect view of the creator and attaching godlike attributes to them, they can be their perfect human in an imperfect world. 
but the moment that performer makes a mistake or acts in a way that was not expected of them, the world gets destroyed, and the blame falls on the performer for acting like a human instead of whatever else they were expecting in the end. This brings immense pressure and responsibility for the creator, and can cause them to crack down, make them take a mental break, or worse, retire for good. What is not brought to light often enough is the increasing loneliness problem caused in part by these parasocial relationships. Why go through the effort of creating a group of friends when you can have a relationship with one simple click? Unfortunately, in the end, parasocial relationships promise to address a need that it can only make more acute. This becomes even more evident with the appearance of sites that use parasociality to its fullest potential. Sites like Twitch, OnlyFans, and Patreon can give us the possibility to be recognized by our favorite creators for a fee. We can feel a sense of exclusivity and intimacy. We can be recognized as an individual instead of an unknown in the crowd. But in the end, we all acknowledge that we can only get so close to our favorite creators. It feels empty, unfulfilling and we always crave for more. A true relationship can only be established in the context of reciprocity, where two people find each other valuable to one another, something that only interacting with real people can give us instead of the virtual world. Saying all this makes it seem like I carry a rather negative view of parasocial relationships, but it's quite the opposite. I feel like parasocial relationships can be rather beneficial to most people, and seeing as they are an inevitable part of the digital age, I feel like we should embrace them instead of seeing them as an enemy. I took a deeper look at niche online communities where parasociality is often a factor, namely K-pop, VTubers, and Dream SMP communities. And I realized that most of them share a critical view on their consumption of media from their favorite creators. They carry an aura of self-consciousness to not fall too deep, making sarcastic statements about the people who do go too far sometimes, and joking about more extreme fans. We must remember that there is always a reason why we have a favorite creator or performer. It is because they gave us a reason to fall in love with them. They gave us positive feelings in times where we needed them. They inspired us to become better people in some way or another. They showed us that life isn't all that bad in experience. And this tremendous communal force can be used for many good things. For example, charity streams, positive influencing, and fueling creativity, to name a few. If an online persona can inspire people to the point where they create art, writing, memes, music, events, and even businesses, anything that can make a person grow through their own efforts at life, I feel like parasocial relationships are more helpful to the average viewer than detrimental. Although I do agree that this doesn't diminish the truly disgusting parts of parasocial relationships, the things that can happen between the creator and an audience member who goes too far. We can have stalking incidents, doxing, swatting, immense financial loss, immense loneliness and depression, literally trying to become the person you admire, a dependence on a creator to be happy, or even delusions of fantasy. These kinds of things are something that no one should experience, but they are often caused by much deeper personal issues, and getting overly attached to a performer becomes a way to alleviate those for them. Unfortunately, those issues only get dragged along in their obsession. They go deeper, but every time they do, they must use increasingly more extreme methods to cope with their problems. We can ask ourselves if we are following this creator closely because we like them as a person, or simply because we are using the parasocial relationship we establish with them to solve deeper personal issues, issues we must face by ourselves and stop dodging. But even with all these extreme examples, parasocial relationships still have more positive outcomes than negatives. For me, I can say that they truly did, and looking at it from another perspective, I'm very grateful that they exist in the first place. A lot of hobbies and things I love in my own life, currently, comes from these parasocial relationships. Some examples can be piano, that I started playing because I saw Fundy playing it on stream once, and I was inspired to play it myself. Or journaling, that I started because of Nathaniel Drew, and last but not least, even these videos that I started making because I was inspired by Gargura, a VTuber of all things. Of course, they're not the sole reason that I started doing these things. I think I wanted to do these things for a long time. It's just that these people gave me the push I needed to start doing them. So in the end, what do I want you to take away from this video? Well, my ultimate goal with this video is to change your perspective on how you view parasocial relationships in your own life. To see them in a more positive light and use them to their full potential, 
and bring out the inspiration and motivation that can come from using those. Like everything else, it comes down to moderation. When we consume any type of content, it becomes a parasocial relationship. We must be aware of when we get invested too much, spending time, money, and energy doing actions that we shouldn't be doing for our own good. It really depends on the mindset we have when coming into parasociality. We have to learn to be a part of the audience community as a whole, instead of trying to be a separate individual and recognized by the creator, because we are not their friends in the end. They do like us, but only as the audience, not as a individual person. We must remain conscious of keeping the right distance and seeing it at face value. They are entertainers first and foremost, and before that, human beings just like us. If they do have a positive influence in your life, then use that power to do good in your own life and bring out your best efforts at living it. There are many positive impacts that can come out of parasocial relationships, and I feel that the more people know about those, the more people can use them to their full potential and bring out some of that immense power to bring the best of themselves in life. And really, that's all I wanted to say. Thanks for watching.